This is called Escape Plan. <clears throat> At the Casa de Cultura in, Bo in Bogota, mountain village dancers made vertical tight movements. The dancers were short and dark like my wife, Paco's sister. A flute and some guitars spent the music wisely. After that came the play. Smart young Marxist students crisply executed the roles, their movements perfect, the dialogue clear. I laughed at the ironies, which I could only half understand. Paco told me next month's play was going to be about Colombian soldiers in the Korean War. Holy smokes, why were they in Korea? To be sacrificed sacrificial victims so Colombia could get better trade with the U.S. Hey, don't worry. It wasn't you, brother. Come with me. I'll take you to the posters. I felt small and crappy collecting political posters. But this was only four years after Allende's overthrow. Chile Libre posters might have gotten smuggled up here even as President Allende with his intellectual glasses stomped around his besieged palace with an AK-47 in his hand. Paco led me through a hallway to the foyer and back where a table held posters. Men stood around talking and laughing. I noticed most of them wore light-colored blazers like Paco's like Paco, the socialist look, maybe. One poster showed a yellow and gray montage of scenes from the Cuban Revolution arranged in the shape of an eagle. Uh, okay. Paco whistled and his friend Geraldo came over smiling. A handshake for the Yank brother-in-law. Paco said, show him. Geraldo check, checked over his shoulder, then opened his sports coat. There were folded up posters in the inside pocket, one of which he took out and spread on the table. It was a real beauty. A pretty Chilean girl in early 70s hippie jeans stood smiling in front of the famous stadium, later used by Pinochet as a holding pen for poets and guitar players waiting to be disappeared. The caption read, Allenar el Estadio Nacional. I, I thought I heard someone say, I'd like to unar her Estadio Nacional. I hope that's not what he said. Five years later, divorced, I would write in my journal, I still have it. Excuse the tack holes. Shoot me, will you? Because we believe, because we hoped in logic, and were poets, the soldiers easily found us. But I was different. I would escape. I fell into the river like the others, believing that my plan would keep the bullet in my back from meaning death. I told the blood to wait a moment. Por favor, till I could reach the bank at a certain predetermined point. But the river was slow, clogged as it was, with excellent plans of escape. The feeling of urgency passed, and I accepted some of the things the river was saying. It unfolded scene after scene in an ironic pageant drenched with life. See? See? At sunset, I came to a shore where a priest was pulling out corpses. We twisted in the water as if trying to get away, trying to remain atheist. But he caught us, his arms full of unexpected strength. His eyes, though manly, were full of tears. I tried without success to critique the church's eternal compromises and dirty deals as he laid us on the bank in rows where we gazed stupidly at the sky, docile students for now. This was all I needed, back to parochial school as a corpse. 
The time to speak has come. I will not be silent. I must be alive. Otherwise, how can I contemplate resistance? I'll signal to the priest soon if the peace that has overtaken my heart will permit the gesture. Meanwhile, meanwhile, 